Good morning. I'm already out of breath. I've been uh, working some in the front yard, just uh, pulling back the uh, straw that I put in the uh, vermicomposting trench <coughs> last year, last fall. And uh, so I pulled that back. I want to show you what uh, it looks like. It's nice and uh, rich. Uh, kind of compost it's broken down in the bottom of it and the uh, roots to the uh, pumpkin <coughs> sorry <coughs> out of breath already and uh, to the uh, pumpkin that I grew last year I, I showed you last year but uh, they're still there and I don't know if I'm gonna leave the roots there to see what happens but uh, I'll show you that I want to take the leaves away from the rose bush and put it in the on the bottom of the um, trench so the pumpkin this year uh, which I'll replant or plant uh, you know another crop this year uh, will have the uh, benefits of the leaves and the coffee grounds underneath and we'll have to see if there's any worms in that um, and then afterwards I want to put some uh, the uh, potting soil bin with the worms and the compost the uh, vermicompost that's in there around the rose bush to uh, get that going for spring it's uh, warm enough these days and uh, things are greening up already so let's go have a look at the uh, trench so as you can see I pulled back this whole big pile of straw here that was in the trench it's all wet from the uh, rain we had the other day and in the trench is all nice and dark compost on the bottom so the plants will feed off of that this year plus with the leaves and the roots from the pumpkin not sure if that's going to do anything but I'm going to leave those there so yeah nice and rich compost and still breaking down it's not completely broke down but it's uh it looks better than you know what this stuff did so let me go take the leaves away from the rose bush and I'll show you that taking back some of the leaves and coffee grounds you can see the the uh, natural worms are living in here there's a worm right there crawling let me go find some more for you, but uh, and uh, seeing it's bright outside, they already went underneath to hide from the light. And another worm I found right there. So my thought on this is it does work. It brings the worms up to the surface and gets them uh, growing and uh, composting this. I'm seeing baby worms in this too. And this here is the vermicomposting hole. My first uh, worm project in the ground. And it works out very well. Uh, this is just cardboard layers that I threw and uh, as you can see by the middle it's all decomposed. The worms have eaten off of that. And what this does is feed my trumpet vine, which is growing. I mean, not now, but uh, it feeds that. So that's a thought. As the worms produce castings, it seeps into the ground. So let's take all this up, and I'll give you a, a tour of uh, underneath and explain what goes on. And digging through here I was trying to find the remnants of the apples I put like 75 pounds of apples in here over a year ago and it's all dirt and compost so so much so much for uh, showing you the apples in this and I think what I'm gonna do is uh, dig all this up out of here so I can uh, just spread it around the yard somewhere I haven't really figured that out but to open this up again dig it all out 
and then uh, put in the bucket of leaves and coffee grounds around the rose bush it'll be more beneficial out here to feed the trumpet vine so that's what I'm planning to do right now is to uh, dig all this out put new stuff in here and uh, let the worms uh, decompose that so as you can see the hole is dug out and I'll add the leaves and coffee grounds to it I'm thinking these roots here are from the trumpet plant maybe the tree next to it but they look a lighter color so <coughs> I tried not to damage them too much but yeah I got all that scraped out to put new fresh stuff in so that's just one bucket added there's worms already living in that so I don't have to uh, go inside and grab any more for this one I'll let the worms work all this down anyway and I'll go grab the rest of it and I wanted to show you the other small rose bush I have and this used to be a big rose bush I'm thinking there was a couple out here but uh, yeah this one got hit by the weed whacker so it's uh, growing back slowly and I'll put some of the leaves and coffee grounds around this or maybe some of the uh, potting soil compost that would work better because that's already broken down to give this a boost for spring so it looks like it filled it in quite a bit but all this will compact down because this is all loose and what I'll do now is just cover it up with all the cardboard and that helps to keep the moisture in uh, and uh, if they run out of food to eat here they'll eat that as you can see it's already broken down and this was uh, from last year it was uh, had pumpkin juice and pumpkins in it and they went to town on it so that's all the cardboard does out here is to keep the uh, moisture in and the uh, birds out there's been lots of birds pecking for uh, worms as it uh, rained the other day so that's the vermicomposting hole as I call it in the backyard and I wanted to take you back out to the rose bush before I put the uh, vermicompost around it look at these two things these were underneath the coffee grounds already so that's two new stems for this year and the season hasn't even started look at how that's already leafing out yeah as I said it's been warm around here so what I'll do is put the potting soil over my compost around here with the worms and uh, that will help the plant out for the uh, spring and for the summer you know for its growing season and as you can see there are quite a few worms in this I put it all around the base of it and around it so that will feed the plant give it nutrition and I don't really have to uh, you know give it anything more this year that will take care of it for the most part and uh, you know I'll feed it uh, compost tea uh, later when it warms up to get this going So that's a look at the rose bush. Look at the dandelion already. That's already starting to bud there. Another bud there. Now, yeah. I wonder if this is going to grow as big as it was last year or even bigger. Because <laughs> remember, it was huge. And this isn't, uh, you know, it's the first of March. Our first part, I mean, it's like March 3rd or 4th. So we'll have to see how large the uh, dating line gets.
this year. So out here is the trumpet vine. I planted two of these from seed and uh, this is the potting soil vermicompost that I took out to help feed that. It's small but it will grow. So that's one of them out here along the driveway. And the other one is a little bit longer. It's already getting into the leaves from last year. But yeah, those two sit along the driveway and over next to it. I stuck an echinacea seed in here the whole top of the pod just to see if it will come up so somewhere underneath there is the pod and it had uh, I think some vermicompost around it if I remember and I just threw some more on top so we'll have to see if that flowers or if it does anything this year so as you can see I'm uh, putting more peat moss into the potting soil mix I'm going to put it on that side. There's plenty of worms on this side to migrate over. I'm mixing up a box, not a box, but a bucket. Coffee grounds and peat moss. There's peat moss in there. And as you can see, it's just crappy potting soil that didn't want to do anything with plants. So I'm using it as a uh, part of bedding and food. The worms will eat that and as you saw it comes out to some nice rich rich castings worm castings there's an apple down there too so that's what I'm doing is making up a batch of uh, more potting soil to replenish what I just took out so this was my chocolate mint I cleaned up all the uh, dead stuff and left some of the main stems gave it some of the vermicompost from the potting soil bin so we'll see if it comes back to life this year and, uh, I want to see if it will survive the winter without uh, water or if I should have brought it in so another experiment to try and this is my echinacea or cone flower this should come back I don't know both the mint and this one was my first time last year I bought these I bought this one from a nursery and I bought the uh, chocolate mint from uh, Home Depot so I put uh, some more castings in this and we'll see it should come back and uh, it should do well with all the uh, worm castings in this so what transpired to be just that was going to be just a quick vlog of just the uh, taking the leaves off away from the rose bush and uh, the hummingbird feeder turned out to be all that uh, you know it's not even not even three o'clock in the afternoon yet and all that happened uh, which is quite a bit for me I mean I got up uh, a little bit later than usual but uh, yeah I used a whole 10 pounds of coffee grounds in that peat moss bucket and uh, so tomorrow will be the uh, hummingbird nectar for uh, Renee because she asked the other day and seeing it's good weather out here uh, I'm going to uh, make that and show how it's done uh, simple takes less than an hour well not even that 15 minutes maybe just to boil the water but I'll show you I don't want to keep going on the vlog on this one and lengthen it out th as much so hopefully you enjoyed uh, everything that happened today uh, that's what happens when you get cooped up uh, all winter and I want to be outside doing stuff and just one thing led to another and it uh, you know it was quite a bit that happened and so the start of spring is here and uh, 
uh, hopefully uh, your start, I know some places out there are still under snow, but <laughs> um, your start will be uh, coming soon. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.